Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Jenna or Jenna's Plants on Instagram. I did a video last about plants that aren't on my wish list, plants that I don't really like. Uh, so I only thought it would be fair to do a video this time on plants that are on my wish list. Not super surprisingly, a lot of the plants on my wish list are Hoyas. There are a few Hoyas that I have been on the lookout for, just kind of casually for a while. The real problem is a lot of them are like way expensive still and I've kind of just been waiting for the prices to come down. I think one that's really on my wish list is the Argentinian princess. That one is still pricey. It's taken a long time for the prices to come down. They have been coming down, but it's still like a little out of my budget. So that one is, yeah, one that I'm hoping to get one day. I know that I could like propagate it and sell it maybe, but I'm a little worried about because it's variegated that it could revert. That does happen a lot with inner variegated Hoyas, I find. So I would be a little nervous buying it as an investment and then maybe the prices could fall and maybe I wouldn't get anything back for it really. But I think once the prices are a bit more reasonable, I'll definitely get one. Along the same line, the outer variegated Polynura is one of my favorites of like the new Hoyas that have kind of come on the scene recently. Again, that one has dropped in price really quickly because I find like Polyneuras actually grow really quickly when they're happy. So it's easy to, you know, have new ones kind of enter the market. So I think I'll probably be able to pick up that one soon because I think a two, a two leaf cutting is, is not too hard to find. One that's kind of a, a weirder one, a Hoya, Hoya Insularis. That one is kind of cool because it has these like rectangular leaves, like thin rectangular leaves. I just think it's very like interesting and different, kind of like hot Hoya um, Spartioides. I really, I really like that one just because it's like cool and different. But again, Insularis, I don't know why, if it's like difficult to propagate or something. That one has been kind of pricey and I feel like, you know, it's not silvery, it's not variegated. It, it, it really only has this like interesting leaf shape. So I haven't really been able to justify spending like a couple hundred dollars on it. So I'm, I'm hoping one day I'll be able to find a cutting of one for like a reasonable price, but it's not one I'm like actively searching out, even though I have seen them for sale. It's just, yeah, they're still a little bit too expensive for me for what they are. Uh, another Hoya, Hoya Cystiantha, Cist Hoya Cystiantha Splash. This plant has really cool flowers and really cool leaves. I kind of like the Hoyas that kind of grow kind of in a like long arm that kind of like drapes down. The leaves, the leaves kind of like drape and hang. That, I don't know how to describe it really, but like Hoya polynura does it, Platycolis does it. A few of those like thin leaf Hoyas kind of do it where they just kind of have this very nice like cascade of leaves and adding a little bit of splash to that I think is just like so pretty. So that's definitely one I wanna pick up sometime soon. Another really, really cool Hoya, uh, Hoya Desapule, Hoya, it's Hoya Desapule or Hoya Deca, Decapule. So this Hoya would purely get it for the flowers. Like the flowers are the coolest. And I think they only have this like unique kind of like skeleton flower shape when they're first unfurling. I think when the, I forget what the, the petals are called in Hoyas, but initially they're like this, right? And then they, and then they open. So I think they have that cool shape only when they're first developing and then as they open, they do lose that. But just that way that they come together and they have that like little cage of flower, like that's just so, so cool. I would, I would 100% buy that just for the flowers. I think it is just very, very unique. And that's what I love about plants is like when you see something you're like, that is spectacular because I haven't seen that anywhere else. I, of course, am also in love with any Hoya that is splashy. I have to limit myself because it seems like there's always new, beautiful, splashy and silvery Hoyas coming onto the market and they tend to be 
the most expensive, of course. <laughs> one that I know for sure that I want, Hoya Joy Splash. That one has been on my wish list for a while, but for one, they've been really expensive. Um, I like it because it has these like thick, meaty leaves. I've, I've always really enjoyed that with Hoyas, just like very touchable look to the leaves, but then adds splash on top of that and you can get something that's like really spectacular. Unfortunately, all the ones I've seen either, you know, the, the splash hasn't been that great or they've been really expensive or both. I'm definitely going to get one eventually, but I would want to wait until I can find a decent one for a decent price. Hoya Rhyme is a very pretty one. The leaf shape, I th if I remember correctly, is more pointed. It reminds me a little bit of a Hoya Silver Dollar, but the splash is more, um, it's not like fully silver, it is more splashy. But as far as I can tell, the splash seems to be pretty consistent, kind of like a, a Hoya Rang San. So I like that. I don't think I see a lot of them that are low splash or that are reverting. So that's always really good. That's definitely one that I want to pick up again, eventually. Um, they're still, I mean, I think they're in the, around the hundred dollar mark. So that's getting into the price point that I can actually afford. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm not in a huge rush with that one. Uh, another, so on a much pricier one, Hoya, Coriacea silver. These are gorgeous Hoyas. Big leaves, kind of thin, but the leaves themselves can get very large. Kind of reminds me of the Nervosa Jokel. In that way, just, just with the like leaf thinness, but then they're nearly fully silver, kind of like a silver dollar is. I think those are super pretty, but they're still very, very pricey. <laughs> So not one that I'll probably get for a while. Last Hoya that's on my wish list, well, on this list that I have written down. I'm sure as soon as I finish this video, I'll think of like 10 more, but anyways. There's also new ones that come out all the time, so I find it like kind of hard to keep track. And this, this one also is one of the more novel Hoyas, I think, the Buntok Silver. Now, this is like a gorgeous Hoya. I think what makes it so good is like, you know how philodendron like majestic or soderoy silver plants sometimes get these like patches of silver that are almost not all the same in their iridescence quality. It almost seems like the Buntok silver has that, which I think is very cool. And plus the leaves are like ginormous from the pictures that I've seen. They're really big, like uh, the, the Archboldiana or Onycoides or any of those, like the, the ones that have really long skinny leaves and then like big flowers, the Buntok Silver reminds me of that. So I'm, yeah, really wanting one of those one day, but because they're so new, they're still kind of like thousands of dollars and I, yeah, can't really justify that right now, especially when I don't know if I could care, could care for it properly. You know, Hoyas are so bad for just dying randomly that yeah, I just, I can't do it right now. But definitely gorgeous plan, definitely would want one in the future. I actually have a lot of like terrarium plants on my wish list, and there's a lot more that I don't necessarily know what the names are, but if I saw it, I would get it. That's the thing with a lot of these like terrarium species, they're not necessarily all like identified, like there's a lot of very cool miniature philodendron species and miniature like peperomia species or margravia species. They don't always have like uh, an exact ID. Any of those that are like really cool and interesting terrar terrarium plants I'm really into. I think begonias especially I want more of. There's one, it's begonia lyallii, lyalli, I don't know. It has a really cool like textured edge which like with like a red rim. It's so cool and I just, I think it's the coolest thing. So that's definitely one that I would get and put in a terrarium. Another one that, you know, I think a lot of people like but is notoriously difficult to keep alive is the Darth Vaderiana. So that one is like, it's almost, it's really purple. Like it, it looks very purpley and then it can be more of an iridescent blue or look black in different lights and then it's got like uh, a nice 
bright edge of like white or lime green around it. And plus the, it has that like angel wing leaf shape, which is very, very, very nice. I, I tend to like the like angel wing begonias. But yeah, I, I've heard that that one is really difficult to take care of. So I'm not sure if I will ever actually bite the bullet and get one. The thing with begonias, this is what I've learned anyways. It, it's, it's obviously diff different for different species, but a lot of them like high humidity, but they like a lot of airflow, like tons of airflow. They don't like to dry out all the way or they'll go crispy, but they also don't like overly wet roots. They like very airy substrates. They like not to have moisture like sitting on them or touching them at all, but also they don't like dry environments. So it's very like difficult for me. I find begonias have always been one of the plants that I struggle the most with, even some of the easier ones. So as much as I love them, anytime you see a begonia that's like, makes you go, wow, I can't believe that's a begonia. That's the kind of begonias I like. I just have not had super great success with them, but I would like to get a little bit better. For example, begonia chlorostica, which I believe it's actually been reclassified because there was like a, a chlorostica green and a chlorostica red. One has been like reclassified and one is, is either a hybrid or a completely different plant. I'm not 100% sure. Begonia people tend to be very educated on knowing where plants came from and how they're classified and all of this stuff. Maybe because there just aren't that many copies of certain like species and stuff available. So if you have one, you probably know like the history of it down to like where it was originally collected and stuff. I'm not, I'm not there, but I did think that was interesting. Anyways, I ordered a, a begonia chlorostica and it died very shortly after <laughs> I got it. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know if it was just the shipping that was hard on it. I know begonias are sensitive. What I've found with begonias is almost any time I move one to a new environment, they tend to suffer at first. Even if it's better conditions, it's like they seem to suffer. And I don't know if that one, like I kept it in high humidity thinking that that would help it to adjust, but I don't know if it was just too much and the leaves um, ended up melting because it was it was too much humidity and not enough airflow or i don't know if i let the soil dry out and anyways it, it wasn't a very big plant and it ended up rotting which is really unfortunate i'm not sure if i want to like try again now but so I, I put it back on my wish list because i do want one i would really like to be able to pick one up in person somewhere versus having to get it shipped because i know that begonia is just in general don't seem to do well with shipping. That one might be on my wish list for a little bit longer. Begonia pteroides. This is a really cool like terrarium begonia that doesn't look like a begonia at all. It kind of looks more like a fern to me. That one I'm really, really interested in. Um, I feel like because it's definitely like a, a terrarium species, it, it might do a little bit better in my conditions because I have a, a terrarium and I feel like I have a couple good spots where I could put something like that. So that's definitely one that I'm interested in. There are other terrarium plants that I've seen that I'm really interested in. There's a Nervilia plicata. That one is very cool. It has that iridescence like begonias do, but the way the leaf shape is, the way it's like folded up, that's why it's called plicata, I guess, because it has these like pleats in it. Very cool. It kind of reminds me of that one palm that everyone, well, maybe not everyone, but you know, it's it's a pretty popular one that has the like big, like corrugated fan round leaves. It's like that, but smaller and definitely a terrarium plant. Definitely needs very high humidity, but I mean, that that would be perfect for, for me. I would love to be able to get one of those. They're not really super available. That's the problem I find with terrarium plants in general is like they're they're really hard to come by. Kind of like so Biophytum sensitivum. That one's a, that one has been on my wish list for a long time since I started getting into terrariums. 
And I know that people have them. I do see them around in Canada, but I've never seen them for sale. You know, like I've never seen one on a website for sale. Otherwise I would totally pick it up. People tend to really, really like them because they look kind of like palm trees. So they add a really, really cool miniature landscape vibe to a terrarium. They're like the perfect scale. I think they look really cool just on their own, but then like in a terrarium, they're that much cooler. So yeah, I've wanted that one for a long time and I just have not been able to get my hands on one. I saw this really, really cool. So I doubt that I'll ever be able to find this, but I, I found a really, really cool Selaginella, but it's variegated. Like that is just the coolest thing to me because I love my Selaginella Ensenada with its like blue iridescence. But then with this like white variegation, like that is just the coolest, coolest thing. So if I ever found some of that, I would definitely go for it, but I don't think I'll find any of that anytime soon. <laughs> as far as orchids, ever since I got my Lepanthes, I would definitely get more of those. The one I have right now, I think is doing okay in my vivarium, but it's a little hard to tell sometimes. I've been very much interested in like miniature orchids and more orchids that I can have in my vivarium because, well, for one, I don't have a lot of space. So I'm kind of like interested in smaller plants in general these days. And I like the idea of having, you know, the in situ environment where the plants can just like live and do their thing. And it's minimal work and effort for me for like maintaining their conditions. As far as, I specific orchids on my list. There's one Bulbo, Bulbophyllum monophylliform, I think is what it's called. Now, okay, this one is like the coolest, like just the coolest because the leaves are like round little blobs. Like that's just so, so cool. Like it just looks like a bunch of little round blobs. And then every now and then the, it'll get these like little tiny flowers that it sends out, but it's just a teeny tiny little plant with these little blobby leaves. I just think that's like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Another really cool plant that I just haven't been able to find in Canada very much is um, Passiflora. There are some that have very like butterfly like leaves and they just, you know, they just grow. They vine everywhere. They're very like fast growing, kind of like Dioscoria is, which is another one of my like favorite genera. So. I'm really, really interested in finding one of those. I've just never really seen it for sale in Canada. And I've seen others that have like a inner, if they're like two tones, they have like an inner color and then an outer rim. I just like the idea of plants that kind of grow and vine and don't need too much support. They can kind of just do their own thing without needing like a moss pole or something like that. Another really, really cool plant that I found that's just kind of a weird, weird plant, Schizobasis intrica. This is like, I, I believe it's caudiciform and it gets these really, really delicate, I don't even know if I wanna call them leaves, but they're just like sprouts. They look like wires coming out of the plant, really. They're so delicate and thin. It's like, how can the plant even photosynthesize with that? But it does, it, it lives and it's happy. And I think that's just like, that's really cool. It's another very unique plant that, that I like. I've really been into carnivorous plants and pings especially. I have gotten a few recently, so I can't think of like a specific one that's on my wish list. I kind of want to just make sure that the ones that I have, I can keep alive because that's the biggest challenge sometimes. But honestly, any ping that turns like red or pink or purple, I am really, really into that. You can pair them with moss a lot and I love that look. I love the like terrarium bog look. So I'm experimenting with a few different things to try and sun stress some and grow others on lava rocks. So I will have to do an update on my ping sometime, but I'm always also on the lookout for new and cool ones because there's like so many hybrids of pings out there. It's amazing. I have to kind of like restrain myself a little bit. <laughs> One genus that is new to me that I did not know about until recently is Serratostemma. Now I saw these, I think from Equigenera, they're, they've been showing off some of the Serratostemmas they have. There's a few different ones 
And honestly, all of them are just gorgeous. Like they're beautiful. I really, really, really want one. I want to try importing one. I love the way that they're trailing. I find it's very difficult actually to find nice trailing plants because I think a lot of plants that people have that trail like philodendrons, they're actually not super happy when they're trailing. Like they're really meant to be growing or they would be growing naturally more, you know, vertically. So I find there's not a lot of good true trailing plants, but that one definitely seems to be one where, you know, that's just how it grows with these long pendants, these long strands of leaves. They're just beautiful. And the one I was seeing, it's like the color also changes. So the newest leaves are like orange or reddish and then they gradually get more green. Unfortunately, I've heard they're like a, a pain to import. So I've kind of been reluctant to actually spend the money and try and rehab them. I'm still really, 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 really wanting one, but I wish I could find like a, a shop that just sold them versus having to try and import it myself. Anyways, that is one I really, really hope to to get one day. If I, if I do do another import order, I probably will try it out because yeah, so cool, so cool. Another genus kind of along the same lines that I've only gotten into recently, Huperzia, I think that's what it is. Beautiful trailing plants. Some of the ones that I've seen, the leaves are, they're a little shiny. So when you get clusters of all these little leaves together, they are actually almost sparkly. It's a very beautiful effect. I've heard that they can't be like traditionally propagated. I heard it doesn't work if you just like take a cutting. Don't quote me on that because I haven't like done the full research, but I, I feel like I remember reading that. They can only be propagated by seed or spore or something like that. So that might be why they're a little more difficult to come by. But I'm, I'm hoping that maybe I can import one, one one day. Some I don't love as much as others. I like the ones I think with the smaller leaves versus the longer leaves. So it would also be a matter of finding one that I really I really like. I know staghorn ferns or platycerium are really popular these days. Now, my husband isn't a huge fan of them, so I have to be really, really, really picky about the ones that I choose. So I found two that I think I for sure want to at least see in person so I can decide if I wanna get one. One is the Ridleyi. That one has really like cute, curly fronds, which I really, really like. I, I like that it stays like kind of small and compact. So that's definitely one that, that I want. Another cool one that I was looking at was Willinkii. That one has very, very frosted looking fronds, if that makes sense. Again, it seems a little more compact. The fronds aren't very long, but they're very like compact and they have very intricate fingers, the way that the leaves kind of branch out. I really, really just like the way that it, that it grows. I mean, there's a lot of the platycerium that I, that I like and I think are cool, but as far as ones that I could probably actually grow, those are, those are two. I think because they stay a little bit more on the smaller side is a little bit more realistic for me that I could grow them in like a cabinet or something. I know a lot of people like to do a whole wall mount, but I don't think I could get away with that. So those two, I think I will, I will keep my eye out for. Okay, finally, anthuriums and philodendrons. I'll, I'll deem it like traditional aeroids. <laughs> so I love anthuriums, I think more than I love philodendrons. So let's, let's start with the one philodendron on my wish list, which would be the philodendron billetier variegated. Now I have a regular billetier and I really, really like it. I love that it's just so easy. Honestly, one of the easiest plants in my collection to take care of. The variegated one, I think everyone agrees that they're just beautiful. It's like a yellow variegation if you haven't seen them, but I'm sure you have. There's some really stunning ones out there. Now they have been super, super expensive and the price has not come down very much. So it will probably still be a long time before I get one, but yeah, definitely, definitely one that's on my wish list. That should be, you know, I don't think a surprise to anyone. <laughs> I feel like most people 
want a philodendron billetier. So I'll probably be waiting a little while on that one. So as far as anthuriums, probably number one on my wish list that realistically I could purchase is the Anthurium crystallinum red. This Anthurium, well, their leaves come in like a bright red color and it kind of stays in the veining a little bit. And then the leaves themselves are super, super dark. So as far as all the like crystallinums go and the hybrids, I think that one is my favorite. Every time I see one in a video or in a photo, they're always gorgeous. Just so, so nice. So that's definitely, definitely one that I want. Another one I know a lot of other people want and probably I will never have a true one of, but the Anthurium Delta Force, that is just such a cool Anthurium to me. I so I love the original Anthurium Clarinervium. It's one of my favorites. And I more recently got a King of Clarinervium. And I also got a Anthurium uh, Pterodactyl. They've been kind of common here in Canada recently. So I picked one up because it wasn't too expensive. And it does have the kind of like spread lobes, not as extreme as the Delta Force, but it does a little bit have that look. So I'm kind of hoping that as it grows out and gets bigger, that will kind of satisfy my desire for that kind of look. I won't be able to afford a true one probably ever, <laughs> but you know, if I found one and I could afford it, definitely, definitely one that I want. I'm a big fan of any plant, any Anthurium that's dark like almost black with like little to no veining that's kind of like the look i'm going for and i think the closest thing i've seen to that is the anthurium ace of spades tazula dark form northern plant room on instagram specifically has like a really really nice one that's like kind of the look that i'm going for the problem with ace of spades is like there's a billion anthuriums out there that like claim to be ace of spades and it's kind of like they look as any hybrids will they look very different from each other so it, honestly it doesn't even have to be an ace of spades i just want something that like looks like that <laughs> and i feel like the only way to get that for sure would be to like get a seedling from that plant or a division and Somia northern plant room does sell some of her seeds and plantlets every now and then so I, I will probably be able to get something from her eventually, but they're still, even the seedlings are kind of pricey. I think I have actually from her a Magnificum crossed with that Ace of Spades, but it's very difficult when plants are seedlings to tell what they'll look like when they get big. Some seedlings might have more genetic similarity to one, plant or, or they might present more like the mother plant or the father plant. So it can be very difficult with seedlings to get like the look that you're going for. So I'm kind of just always on the hunt for dark anthuriums, if that makes sense. Well, thank you so much for watching my wish list video. I've been thinking about it for a while. I'm sure that I'll think of more wishlist plants. I, I know my wish list kind of changes all the time because I get new stuff in or I kind of you know, decide that mm, it's one I wanted, but it, it's, you know, it's too similar to something I have or my taste kind of changed with what I'm interested in at the moment. I'll have to do an updated version sometime. Let me know what your number one wishlist plant is. I think, I think of everything on this list. The one that I would most realistically get next is maybe the Anthurium Crystallinum Red. It would just be a matter of actually finding one. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.